Okay, guys, welcome to number three now. So let's do this. So we're given a function, which is a typical quadratic formula, quadratic expression, and we need to express this quadratic expression into this typical form. Okay, so we've got x plus a all squared plus b. Now, if you haven't seen this before, this is known as completing the square. And it's super easy. You literally have to think of a perfect square and two numbers that multiply, which will give us at least the first two terms, x squared minus 10x. That's the general idea. The plus 23 is pretty much the error. So we want to find the error difference. So what I did here is that I looked at the original equation and, and by the way, this works all the time. I just half the coefficient of 10 and get five, wrap up in a nice bracket, x minus five all squared. So that's why I drew a nice red line over here and then copied out the next bit plus 23 and realized that I had to minus this term squared, five squared, because that this will give us the exact error. And when you do this, so it's always like this, you get the same expression, 23 minus 5 squared minus 25 is minus 2. So that's it. So in fact, this is pretty much a perfect square with 2 less. And that will give us the original expression. That's it. That's really all you have to do. So that's our perfect square. And that means A is going to be minus 5 and B is going to be minus 2. That's what we do. Now, let's look at part B. So hence or otherwise, find the exact solution to what we just did. So we're going to use firstly the completing the square format. And notice that all, that hap all that's happened is that the function fx is now equal to zero. So yeah, so let's whip it out. Let's let fx equal zero. So set this equation to zero and solve. So plus two across, like I did, S get rid of the square by square rooting, so you get plus minus root two, and finally plus five across, done. So you should get five plus minus root two. And um, they don't tell you, they said find the exact solution, so they want the plus minus result. That's it, not much to say there. Now part C. So using your answer to part B, so this result here for x, um, find the largest solution to this equation. Oof. So when you look at this head on, it looks a bit, bit, bit intense, but really it's just the first equation powered down by half. So instead of x squared, you get y. Instead of x, you get y to the power half or 0 0.5. So essentially you could say, okay, y is clearly x squared. So what I did, I just let y equal x squared. Or you can say x equals y to the power half or that. And all they want you to do is repeat this, but this time find the solution to the larger part. So find the plus result, not the negative solution. Because you're given a plus minus answer, the larger solution is always the, the, the positive one, the one you add. So, so pretty much do the same thing. So instead of um, solving for x, so we've got y equals x squared. So we can say, okay, let y equal this solution squared because it's the same thing. And now you just expand this bracket. Notice that this, this bracket here is a quadratic because you got to, because this is a square function here, this, this is essentially 5 plus root 2 times 5 plus root 2. And when you expand it, you just do like you do for quadratics. So you got 5 times 5 is 25, 5 times root 2 is 5 root 2, root 2 times 5 is 5 root 2, and then root 2 times root 2 gives us a whole 2. And then collect everything and you should get 25 and 2 is 27, 5 root 2s, add them up, you get 10 root 2s. And that's it. Question and problem solved. So question three isn't really difficult. Once you once you get through this completing the square bit, it's all you know rather straightforward, I guess. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this video, give me a like. Uh, but otherwise, let's move on.